Okay. This half hour, we're going to talk a little bit about elections. You know, another debate tonight. At least most of the Republican candidates are participating. We've been hearing a lot about the one who isn't. Uh, but at any rate, uh, pretty soon we'll be approaching primaries, and we'll probably blink a couple of times, and the general election will be here. You know how it is. So here to help us think that through is Calhoun County Clerk Ann Norlander and Terry Lowe from the clerk's office as well as in charge of elections. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Welcome back. Thank you. So let's, uh, what are we worried about right now? Primaries, I presume, right? Uh, first on the docket is the presidential primary. Yes. Which we want to differentiate between the general primary in August. The <laughs> Try not to give you a headache in all this. Okay. Presidential Got it. <laughs> primary occurs every four years. Mm-hmm. Uh, it moves around. Uh, it used to be in February, uh, but uh, it's in March. Uh, that is due to the legislature. A few years ago, uh, they changed that. It. Yeah. Um, and it's all for jockeying for positions to be to get the candidates in here and to make Michigan a viable player in the selection of the president. Yeah, we remember that a few years ago. There was all this chatter about uh, how effective Michigan's primary was in determining the candidate and, you know, how Iowa and New Hampshire get all that attention. And so the other ones are trying to set their primaries earlier to try and affect that. Do you think that that makes any difference? It probably makes a difference uh, financially Mm. in the state. Yeah. Uh, because the more candidates you come in that come in, uh, airwaves, uh, TV, yeah. uh, media uh, attention, and um, sure, it it does. Michigan is kind of unique in the regard that um, in the third district, which we sit in, um, congressional district, uh, you know, the winner takes all mm-hmm. um, of the third, but not in every congressional district. They're all taken separately. So, Terry, what's going on right now as we prepare for this primary? Actually, absentee ballots are now ready. Oh. And um, so if you're interested, contact your local clerk. And um, first part of that process is to fill out an application. And with this election, it's unique in that because this is a closed primary, you will indicate in writing right on the application if you would like to vote on a Republican. Excuse me, a Republican ballot or a Democrat mm-hmm. ballot. Right, okay. This is the only election that's handled that way. And there will not be a straight party ticket button to push, right? Well, that only pertains to November general election. Uh-huh. And yes, you're correct. Okay. So we're not quite to the no reason absentee, right, Ann? We still have to give a reason. Well, we do have to give a Yes, that's true. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that the legislature sees that uh, it would be very compatible with the abolishment of the straight party ticket. Yeah. Uh, just because there are many clerks that feel the lines will prohibit people from voting. Mm-hmm. So that that's that seems to be the biggest issue. When we talked about that at length last time you were yeah. here, we were, you were more worried about the Black Friday line at Best Buy as opposed to the uh, voting line after that. But still, it well, <laughs> would be nice. Any lines, you know, I mean, th- this is, uh, you know, it's a privilege to right. vote. Right, right. You know, it isn't a privilege to buy a big screen TV. Yes. So. So even though we have to give a reason for the absentee ballot, it's not too arduous a process, right, Terry? Right. There's uh, six or seven various reasons. Um, if you're going to be out of the area mm-hmm. the entire time the polls are open on Election Day, if you're 60 or over, If you're 60 or over, that's all you have to do is say you're 60 or over, and Mm -hmm. that's all it takes. Okay, good enough. We'll talk more about this, too, when we come right back in just a minute as we get past the absentee part and start distinguishing between the other primaries and this primary. That's coming up in just a minute. 815 WBCK and Orlander, County Clerk, and Terry Lowe here, Director of Elections in the Clerk's Office. We're talking about primaries. All right, so we talked about... The uh, presidential primary, there are others that we should talk about, too. Okay, shall we go to May? Yeah, let's do it. (laughs) Okay, if your listeners have paper and pencil, (laughs) May 3rd, Tuesday, is a special election. um, No offices on this ballot, only proposals. Any jurisdiction can place a proposal on this ballot. Um, So the deadline for that is February 9th, so Mm -hmm. after that date we'll know what that ballot's going to look like. And some municipalities will have decisions, some won't. You'll have to figure out whether yours does. Right. Right. 
Then August 2nd, also a Tuesday, is the primary election, general primary, many offices on this ballot. This is an open primary, meaning that both parties, candidates, are on the same ballot. Okay, Okay. and a voter um, does not have to declare ahead of time on paper, like we just discussed for the presidential primary. Mm -hmm. However, in the privacy of the voting booth, they will determine if they want to vote in the Republican um, Party or the Democrat, and then their votes must stay within that party. All right, so what races are we going to see on that one? Oh, (laughs) well, oh. It's, it's a biggie. Uh, yep. The president won't be on there. Right. Um, uh, we will see all the county offices, mm-hmm. all the township offices, okay. countywide offices. That includes the five the elected commission. officials, um, <clears throat> the seven county commissioners. I don't, I've never counted how many township officials will be on the ballot. Okay. These Most are have um, four to five offices. Mm-hmm. Our state representatives will be on the ballot. Our state senator will not. Okay. Mm, so, uh, boards. These oh. are all very locally focused, obviously. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Township offices are um, every four years, so it's yeah. during presidential mm-hmm. year. Okay. So this narrows the field, then, for the generals. Yes, and which is it, November 8th. It nominates the individuals to appear on the, on the November ballot. It's a nominating process. Right. So think of it like a funnel. We're, we're narrowing down here, mm-hmm. uh, except not everybody gets through the funnel. Maybe right. that's a bad image. Maybe I should have chosen another example. But you get the point. So we're narrowing down here to get to the general election. And uh, these elections, you, you may have noticed, all on Tuesdays by design. Yeah. Okay. So what are folks asking right now or most confused about in all of this? I think the most confusing thing for everyone is the presidential primary. Okay. Uh, even speaking with people last night at a meeting uh, that are involved, uh, there was confusion mm. on, on their part. So that's why it's great for us to be here to, to try to clarify that. Yeah. And so is it too late to be registered for the presidential primary now, or is that uh, not quite? February 8th. Okay. You did say that. See, even I'm confused. February 8th, got it. And the other, I mean, once you get registered by February 8th, you're good for the rest of it too, right? Well, yes, but yeah. a lot of people don't know that. Right. So they, some, a lot of people think that they have to register for every election. Uh-huh. The only time you have to re-register is if you move from the district that you live in. Okay, good to know that too. How do we register, by the way? Do we have to come to your office to register? Well, we'd love to have you come to our office, but <laughs> it doesn't have to be just ours. Okay. Uh, there's a whole list of offices where you can present city clerk, township clerk, um, Department of uh, Human Services. Um, what am I forgetting? Secretary of State, State, maybe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. State, yeah. mm-hmm. Secretary yeah. of State branch offices. Right. Although, to avoid those lines, you might want to see your township clerk. And township, and township clerks don't all keep business hours 8 to 5. So um, we welcome you to come into our office if you'd like. So what if somebody moves? Sorry, quick question. You just popped in my head. What if somebody moves right in that first part of February, and they're now in a different district, and they didn't get to their new clerk by February 8th, what happens then? They're allowed 60-day oh, window. Okay. Okay, so if you've moved since that 60 days and did not get re-registered uh-huh. uh, by February 8th, then you can still vote at your last jurisdiction okay. okay and then your registration will get canceled there and you'll need to register in your new place mm-hmm. if you've moved earlier than the 60 days then there's no uh, opportunity for you to vote that election wow okay so where does that 60 day happen that's 60 days out from the election is that yes. right okay yes. Out from the primary in this case. Each one, yep. Got each, it. Each election. Okay, so in other words, get that sorted out. And we hear a lot of, of, of talk about disenfranchising voters because mm-hmm. they have to show an ID. But I think Terry can explain the process if you do not have an ID to show at the polls. No one's going to be turned away. It just is a, a series of events that have to take place. One more step, there'll be um, an affidavit to complete okay. saying that 
I just don't have it with me. Got I it. do have one. Now, you know, if you do move, for exa- that's the example I used, you're probably going to go to the Secretary of State to change your license, your uh, address on your license anyway. They're going to ask you, do you want to register to vote in your new That's true. Uh, and it goes both ways. Okay. Um, if you go to the Secretary of State first to change your address, then um, through a process, the voter registration file marries up to the driver's license file, mm-hmm. and then the Secretary of State will send you a little sticker to put on the back of your driver's license, right. and vice versa. If you change your voter registration with um, us, then it will match up to the driver's file as well. All right. Nice to know that's the way that works. (laughs) All right. We're talking about voting today. 824 WBCK. We're talking about voting, and it's coming up quickly, too. Clerk Ann Norlander is here, and Terry Lowe is here, too, from the clerk's office. So was in charge of elections, of course. So uh, what is on the ballots? That's what we need to know. Okay. For this presidential primary, Mm -hmm. which is March 8th, there are two ballots. You determine which ballot you want. Um, For the Republicans, there are 13 candidates. For the Democrats, there are four candidates. Both parties have an opportunity for uncommitted, which means um, you want to vote in the party. However, you don't care to vote for any of the candidates listed, so you can vote uncommitted. Mm. There's also a place for a write-in. At this point, there are no um, valid write-ins. That ballot was set on December 11th meaning anyone, any of the candidates who you may hear now who may have withdrawn, they'll still appear on the ballot because December 11th, that's when it was set and went to print. Okay. Okay. And a Democrat could ask for a Republican ballot and vice versa, right, if they wanted to? That's true. Some folks like to play around with that. Yes, they do. (laughs) Okay. Good enough. And just remember that um, one thing you don't, Whatever party you choose for this election Mm -hmm. does not have a bearing on later in the year. For the August and November, you can select, you can vote whatever party you wish to. Okay. Okay. And I want to make the point that your vote is never, ever disclosed. Your your party might be, you'll be put on on list Uh this election, but your vote is never disclosed disclosed right. it's always private and if you recall how that's handled on voting day that's pretty clear that you're the one who puts the ballot in the machine and so on the it's election private. handler doesn't do that yes. doesn't even see it got it Very all right true. before we go in let's talk about a uh, an article in the uh, inquiry today that has to do with technology funds mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and an audit that has taken place uh, evidently, some technology funds in the clerk's office were used to buy non-technology things. What's this all about? What it's all about is that uh, Thorough Invested, our corporate counsel, I learned through an email, is the one that asked for the um, fraud audit. Uh, Micah Myers' uh, law firm was hired. They, in turn, hired accountants, and those accountants clarified everything with the Department of Treasury. Um, Let's remember here that I don't have a P card uh, personally. I don't code the expenditures. Mm -hmm. They go to the finance department for review, and they are reviewed, and then they go to the board for approval, and all of these were approved. And during this time from 2011 to 2014, I was given the leeway to balance my budget by moving some of these monies into what was necessary so that I didn't have layoffs in the office. But, you know, I want everyone to know that our office uh, cooperated fully and transparently, as I stated in the paper. Um, And I'm not surprised with the conclusion because there was no intentional wrongdoing by anyone. And um, Kelly Scott's recommendation that we review and make those necessary adjustments to the county's practices and policies related to the automation fund, but other funds as well, Mm -hmm. in my opinion. Uh, I'm all for that, and I think it's a great idea. However, I think that... um, if we continue to have a parade of <clears throat> gentlemen and women come to the commission to talk about this, I think the best thing we can do as a county is to say that um, the matter has been fully investigated and it's time to put it to bed. Mm-hmm. Um, I, there will be more coming out on this whole issue in the days ahead, but I appreciate your asking about it and um, I feel very comfortable in my position, although <clears throat> Commissioner Frisbee, uh, Corporate Counsel Lindsay, and Matt Davis, realtor from Marshall, have all 
stated publicly that they will do anything they can to remove me from office. Hmm. So they've played it out on Facebook primarily. I see. All right. So these automation funds had some limits in terms of how those expenditures should be made, but you also had some latitude with that. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. But um, needless to say, there were some expenditures that they felt after the audit that were inappropriate, but their conclusion was that we would just put that back into the general fund. So it would be a transaction of, you know, I call it magic money, moving it from one one um, mm-hmm. account. account to another. So yeah. um, we will be uh, diligent in our coding, and I hope that finance and the board, whose duty is to appropriate the budget and to set policy, that we can all work cooperatively if there are issues to remove them from, um, from the claims payable list. Mm-hmm. And... Um, review them, and if they're unacceptable to anyone along the chain of command, that they be recoded and put into the correct um, line line item. Okay. Well, we appreciate your uh, talking about that and helping us understand what this is all about. And the elections, too, of course. Whenever you're ready, we're ready to talk more about it. Well, we'd love to come back, as you well know, and um, I hear from the public that they enjoy when Terry and I have the opportunity to keep them informed of Good. all of the dates and the elections. And um, it's it's pretty cr- heady stuff when you get into it. Right, and, lots uh, of details. And it's very, very important, as you well know in my in my thinking, that right. we, we live in a great country, and it's the very least that we can do is to exercise our right to vote. Mm-hmm. Well, we appreciate your help in helping us do that. Ann Norlander, County Clerk, Terry Lowe. Chair of Elections, thank you for your help. Thank you. All right, talk to you soon.